Hello everyone, welcome to my series about Roblox. So I'm just gonna make these videos short and sweet and to the point. Basically, I'm gonna cover some of the essentials that you'll wanna use when you're creating your games in Roblox. If there's anything that you wanna see that I'm not covering, just go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. And let's go ahead and jump into the code now. All right, for my first video in this series of videos, kind of getting you started with Roblox Studio and different parts that you might want to use, or at least uh, every game will probably have at least some of these aspects that I'm going to be including in these videos. We'll start with remote events. So remote events are pretty important because if I wanted to uh, move this block, or if I wanted to change the color or other things, I, I want to make sure the client and the server are in sync. And I'm going to show you why if you go ahead and try to move these blocks, uh, just via the client versus moving them via the server, you're going to notice how things get a little screwy because they're not going to actually uh, be in sync from each client to the server. So I've created this red block here, which is uh, called local part. And then I called this one server part, which is blue. I also went ahead and anchored both of these parts and turned off collisions. The reason why I, I did this anchoring is so that way when you move the block up and down, it's not going to just automatically fall because of gravity, which is part of the game engine. And I also turn off the, uh, the collisions so that way they won't uh, run into each other when I'm moving them around just to showcase what I did here. So I also add this player control script. The player control script is used so that way I can showcase uh, moving on the client versus moving on the server. So if I push the arrow keys left, right, up, down, I'm going to move the part accordingly. And this is basically one of the ways that you would actually move the part is updating its position by adding a vector position to it. And again, that's happening for the arrow keys. For A, W, D, and S, uh, that will also fire a remote event. And that remote event is what is going to allow us to basically push that command from the client over to the server script. So the server will then process the event and that will update the position on the server. And that's where we're going to actually see, uh, you know, the difference between updating on the client and updating on the server. And then this script here is on the server. This is the script I'm talking about that is listening for that uh, remote event to be fired. So it's saying on server event, I'm going to connect that event to this local function. And then I'm using the key code that was pressed to perform that position update, just like I did on the client. So let's go ahead and we'll run this so that way you can see exactly what I mean. So to run it, I just click play. Now, if I click A, S, D, or W, I can move it left and right, up and down. And you'll see here that, that blue block is moving with those keys. The arrow keys are the ones that I hooked up to the client and only on the client. So now when I click this button, current client, we'll switch to the server. And you'll notice that the blue block seems to have actually moved properly but the server has no idea about the block movement for the red block and that is because you're only changing on the client and you can kind of see why this would be a problem here but i'll showcase even further why this would be a problem by pretending like i'm actually two players and roblox studio has a feature for this so if i click this test button i can change the number of players and then I will just go ahead and run it with two players. All right, so here we have our server and the other player screens are popping up. So this is one of the players and this is another player. And so I will use ASDW right now on this first player here. You'll see on the server, it's updating. On the other player, it's updating. And it's also updating for this player. So 
you could do the same thing for this other player and it's still working properly. But if I use this player on the right and I use the arrow keys, you'll see that it's only updating what that player thinks that that block position is. It's not updating for the server, it's not updating for the other player. Similarly, I can move this player's red block and it is also out of sync. So if you want to actually have players being able to update the position of parts or some other shared attribute for parts on your game, you're going to want to have a way to fire an event from the client that can make its way to the server so that way it is properly updating for all clients and the server. That wraps up this video. I wanted just to make this short video to showcase uh, remote events. If there's any other specific parts of Roblox Studio that you want me to uh, make a video about, just let me know. I'm going to slowly work my way through uh, the different features in Roblox Studio, what other uh, reserved keywords or services or just walking through how you add parts, models, etc. Uh, I will make videos on those as I come up with ideas myself, but if there's anything you want to see specifically, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe for future content.